Hey there, and welcome back to another Miraculous Ladybug video. And sorry about my voice in advance, I'm a little bit sick. But I'm not about to let that stop me from unleashing a salty rant about one of the worst characters in the show, and the completely unsatisfying way in which his arc seems to have been handled in-universe. And of course, that character that we'll be focusing on today is Andre Bourgeois, the father of Chloe, and one of the worst, most irredeemable characters in the entire franchise. Undoubtedly one of the worst fathers in the show, right up there with Gabe, but unlike Gabe, the show is bending over backwards now to make him seem like a poor little victim, bullied by his wife and his daughter. What a sad little man he is. Oh, schnookums, poor little baby. No, none of that here. Andre haters, we unite today. He honestly sucks as a human. And now it's like Astrid and the writers just want us to forget how terrible he is and transplant all of that dislike onto Chloe herself, which... Well, yeah, she sucks too, but let's be reasonable. It's mostly his fault. So yeah, let the hate train commence as we examine Andre's failings as a father, a mayor, and a man from start to finish. So yeah, no time like the present. Let's get going. Okay, recently, we got the information that Andre was once apparently a decently good person, or at least he seems to think so. Although I would argue that you should never ever take anything he says about any topic whatsoever without the heaviest pinch of salt. Yes, you need to add salt to all of his statements because he seems to be a habitual liar. But yeah, in his conversation with Gabe, he talks about how they all wanted to do their own thing and make art. Gabe made clothes, Andre made films, Emily did something. She was an actress, but don't know what else she did. And I'm sure Audrey also did something. Yeah, she's in fashion, right? Yeah, she did fashion too. And they were all happy with their lives, even if they weren't exactly rich. But then he made the grand mistake. He fell in love and he changed his name and he became a terrible person all to impress his friend Audrey, who apparently was a terrible person. That's right, folks. That's the message the show is trying to send us today with this storyline, that behind every terrible, awful man who abuses his privileges and his political power, there has to be a mean and nasty woman pulling the strings. That's right. It's all the women's fault, damn females. Like, seriously? Seriously? Whew. Not gonna lie. Cringe. Cringe, cringe, cringy plot point. Like... Yuck, come on, Miraculous. 2023, let's move on. Using that he was whipped? It's not the redeemable excuse that you think it is. And I mean, yeah, the dude was indeed whipped. Changed his whole life direction for a woman who ditched him and had a child with somebody else not long after. And then years later, he takes in that affair baby as a new child to replace the one he ruined trying to impress his wife. But yes, it's all Audrey's fault. But I mean, is it? After all, we know she left the family. We know that he was left alone with Chloe in Paris for years as her primary carer and parental figure. So how much of Chloe's behavior can you really blame on Audrey? I mean, yeah, she's a deadbeat and abusive and that would have its toll, but it seems like she was almost never there. Surely Andre, therefore, deserves the bulk of the criticism for Chloe turning out to be a terrible, terrible human, right? Right? He raised her. He allowed her to abuse her wealth and privilege. He catered to her every whim. He rolled over for her on pretty much every single issue under the sun, whether they're major or minor. And like, it's actually factual that he did this, whilst Audrey was off doing whatever she was doing. I mean, they even address Audrey straight up abandoning the family in the latest season. That flashback episode where some of Marinette's friends try to get her to cut Chloe some slack because she has trauma from being abandoned by her mum at a young age. And so, suddenly, it became so much clearer. It's almost completely Andre's negligence and shit parenting that turned Chloe into the demonic houseborn that we know from the show. And then on top of that, the dude's like the worst politician, the most corrupt, self-serving, and selfish man in the world. It almost feels like a late-stage retcon for him to suddenly be a victim of circumstance, a victim of everybody else's selfishness and cruelty. I mean, he's done so much for his own benefit and prestige. Like, come on now. Let's take a walk down memory lane for some of his greatest hits. And this is just the stuff that I could remember. Okay, so in season one, he's shown to have thrown his weight around enough that Mr. Damocles would rather suspend Alia outright for a minor infraction rather than risk his wrath. He helps Chloe cheat to try and win the hat making contest by paying a professional to create Marinette's design. And I guarantee that he knew for a fact that Chloe did not come up with the idea herself. When Mr. Pigeon's rampaging through Paris, what does he do? He complains to the heroes and not about people being in danger, but that more pigeons means less tourists, which means less money for him. A true man of the people, this one. On career day at the hotel, he gives Alia, the daughter of his head chef, 
a job sifting through the garbage outside simply because his daughter thought it would be funny. There's nothing wrong with being a garbage disposal person, but come on, that is not why they came to the hotel. He then fires Sabrina's dad for not arresting Marinette in school for stealing a bracelet, despite there being no proof, and that realistically, nobody reasonable is going to arrest a child for that. But no, he straight up fires his ass. And then he threatens to cut funding to the school if they don't find it. But I love the corruption. We then later learn that he'd been elected to his fourth consecutive term as the mayor of Paris, despite it being a position that you can legally only hold for two terms, I'm pretty sure. A writing flaw, perhaps? But in the context of this rant, it's simply more proof of his corruption. In Kung Fu, Chloe is shown to be an actual racist, constantly conflating Chinese people and Japanese people as the exact same thing and using the terms interchangeably. And as her only parental figure, I would mostly blame him. Like, blaming a parent for their kid being a bigot, it's not always fair. Sometimes kids are genuinely radicalised on the internet. But having observed his lack of skilled parenting, I feel like this definitely fits. It just makes too much sense. And I mean, that's just season one. There's more. When Chloe doesn't get away in that music video production scene, Andre invents some bullshit to get production on that music video shut down. And not just in Paris, but all of France. That's a lot of money suddenly being wasted, all because his daughter's jealous of Marinette getting to star in it with Adrian. Later, he tries to shut down the public ice rink to make a gym for Chloe. He lets his awful wife walk all over his beloved daughter and treat her terribly all the time. He likely wastes huge amounts of money sending rubbish into space and like, this is public funding. Like, god damn, can you imagine how expensive it would be to send rockets into space regularly with garbage? Come on. He shuts down the school temporarily to placate his crazy wife and daughter. He goes and hides at Adrian's, a teenager's, party simply because he wants to avoid Chloe instead of setting any sort of hard boundaries with her. He encourages his stepdaughter Zoe to give up on her dreams and to join him in trying to constantly appease Chloe and Audrey in the most ridiculous of ways. He concedes to Chloe in paying off Bob Roth to screw over the student film because she didn't get her way. He tries to destroy a popular public park so that he can build a skyscraper, a skyscraper whose purpose is to purify air so he can sell it to make a quick buck for himself, not the city, for himself. What a champion of the environment and the common man this guy is. He later tries to steal from Marinette's family's bakery, trying to take the last pastry that the family wants to share amongst themselves, literally trying to fight an old man for it, get into a physical altercation with Marinette's elderly granddad. How nice. Spending time with the elderly. What a great mayor he is. And then in the most recent episodes, he just relentlessly screws over the school and the students and the officials, and then he quits and he leaves. Doesn't do anything about it, he just leaves. What a clown. He messes everything up, and he doesn't even have the decency to fix any of it. He's just like, eh, it's your problem now, see ya. And you know what? This would actually be genuinely fine by me, because obviously, it's painting the picture of a truly terrible, narcissistic idiot of a man. That in and of itself is not bad. You need villains. And here is one that is truly trash. He's truly despicable. One of the worst. These kind of characters are much needed. Unlikable characters that aren't quite the evil supervillains, but they're a more human type of villain. Your everyday villains, people that you actually know in real life. They add to the show, and it all culminates in this utter degenerate abandoning his own daughter because she's too awful for him. Oh, what a selfish man. He does all this despite making her this way himself with his terrible parenting decisions. He says, nope, I'm done with you. Go with your mum. You're disowned. And he takes in the stepdaughter as his new replacement child. Good luck, Zoe. You're going to need it. What a great villain twist this is. How unexpected. Maybe it's going to lead into a Chloe redemption arc. After all, what kind of parent would do this? Surely the writing wouldn't frame this as a good thing, right, guys? But yeah, it does. Surprise, surprise. Asterisk with the big brain move. <laughs> and this is what pisses me off. Because it's a clear manipulation tactic by the narrative to try and convince you that he somehow isn't just the biggest piece of shit in the entire story. Even worse than Gabe. At least Gabe seems to care about his son a little bit. You could argue that he's doing this for his son, even if he's very abusive. What the hell's... What, what is Andre even doing here? He just ditched his kid and he's like, random affair baby who already has her own dad, by the way. Now you're mine. What? Like... How does this get approved in the final script as a positive redemption arc? Is it a joke? And all the characters, they're pretty much clapping him on the back for ditching his teenage daughter that he himself raised to be entitled. Isn't she like 15? What? 
All the characters are smiling at him when he calls her out, pretty much telling us he's doing the right thing here. Like, come on. He isn't! The undeserved redemption arc is so strong here. Like, has there ever been a character that has deserved and yet received a redemption arc less than this guy? I don't think there is. He's perhaps the most undeserved hero of all time, and yet here we are. Oh, Andre, you're a clown, you're a fool, you're a trash to your parent, and I have an irrational level of hatred surrounding the decision to whitewash this character's sins at the expense of the other characters in the little family. Like, yeah, it's just cringy. Try harder, Astrek. Seriously, real talk. Imagine being 40 plus and hating a character that you invented so much that you try to rewrite history to make her negligent, power-hungry, and corrupt father the victim of his own teenage daughter. That's a yikes from me, dog. Yikes. And so, yeah, there really is not much else to say here. And so I'll just remind you that these are just my opinions, and now I would really like to hear yours. I'll throw it to you. What do you think about Andre's redemption? Perhaps the dumbest plot point in history? Maybe you think I'm wrong. I'm being too harsh. I just can't see the genius of this storyline. I'm curious for your thoughts, so make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and let me know.